<laughs> good morning, everybody. Um, I had a good workout this morning that my ponytail fell off. Um, so I'm kind of on my Monique kick this morning. So I can actually take this off. <laughs> so my entire ponytail has fell off. But I just wanted to come on here and say a few things that I, I just have issues with. Um, that has been on my heart and my chest for a minute and I'm tired of hearing it. Um, that we stick by and it means absolutely nothing. But it also, it shuts the victim down to do nothing and to hold that hurt. And it takes away the accountability for the perpetrator. And these things are... Uh, when they go low, we go high. Or take the higher road. Or, you know, what would Jesus do? Well, you know Jesus cut somebody's ear off one time, right? I want that Jesus. Yeah. Because I'm tired of being the victim. And... It's, it comes to a point when you're, you're, you're fed up and you're tired. Because um, I done took the high road too many times that I don't even want to take that road no more because I'm detouring. My shit now says recalculating. I done let them go low so much that they done chopped off my feet. They can't walk no more. So now I'm crawling to get back. Um, oh, another one that I love is... You know what? We just got to let it go and get along. But why I got to keep letting shit go and they keep doing the bullshit and you never, never, never tell them what to do or address their fucked up behavior or where well, you got to look at the bigger picture. Well, the bigger picture is if this continues to happen eventually everything that has happened to me is gonna manifest and i'm gonna pop the fuck off that's the bigger picture we forget those things we forget that the little things that keeps building up in people that we continue to allow and just brush off for the sake of we really don't want to address it because you know uh it's too much it's too difficult and then when the person blows up oh oh we don't know what happened i don't, I don't understand no you definitely know what understand is and someone told me they was like look at corinthians you know love keeps counting no wrongdoing Oh, no. Love. But I don't love these fuckers. <laughs> we got to keep that. But one thing we need to stop doing. We need to stop allowing these bad people in our families or our relatives continue to hurt the people, the victims of the family. You know what I'm talking about. I'm not saying a specific situation at all, but you know damn well what I'm talking about. If a person can't act right, don't invite them to the events. Don't allow the victim to feel ostracized. Help them feel welcome. Love on them. They didn't do anything wrong. They didn't deserve what happened to them. Tell whoever that wronged them, you know what, you got to get yourself together. And until then... We can't have you here. But I feel like sometimes people don't do that because there's ulterior modem. Is the perpetrator doing these things because they're funding or they have some other issues or they have some us on you? I'm just saying. This is not just my family. I'm just talking to families in general. We really need to stop that. And then we wonder why people feel so depressed and feel lonely and don't have anybody. And we throw all these stupid ass sayings that means absolutely nothing that has no value. It'll get better. No, it won't. You know the reason why it won't get better? Because we're not addressing it. You know the reason why it won't get better? Because you won't allow them to feel what they feel. You always say, get over it. You still stuck in that situation? Yeah, they still stuck. 
because no one allowed them to address it. I went into the mental health field for so many reasons that I saw within my own community, within my own family. And it still hurts me to this day that people continue to do the same stuff over and over and over again. It's like you just won't heal you choosing to live in trauma. I keep seeing people, oh, oh you know, I, I looked at my own situation when my mom passed away, just the niggardly things that happened, that occurred. And I, I, it took everything in me just to maintain some sanity. Because I knew if I didn't, it wasn't going to be good for anybody. When I tell you that I lost the only thing that kept me sane in this world, and the only thing that kept a lot of people safe, you have no clue. But I'm seeing a lot of people hurt, a lot of people in pain. And they're like, well, I wish they would have talked to me. I wish they Sometimes... You're not the person they need to talk to. They truly need a professional. Because you're going to give them these things. Oh, it'll get better. Don't stay there so long, you know. Look at the bigger picture. No. Allow them to feel. You're not a professional. You can't take them through this trauma. Even when I dealt with my own trauma of sexual abuse and sexual assault... I had people ask me about, you know, what happened. And as a clinician and as a trained trauma professional, I had to tell them, you are not equipped to deal with the aftermath of me telling you, of me going through this. And I prefer not to discuss it at this time. So I understand. I'm not somebody who read a textbook or, no. I've been there. Now, everybody's trauma and pain is different. Everybody responds to it differently. But if you are not equipped, it's okay to say, I'm not equipped. I'm here with you, friend. Let's go get some help. Don't take this on your own. And don't make it worse for your friend. Love you guys. Do better. Get better. I know my lips ashy. I know my hair is messed up. But hear the message.